In this video, I broke the world record for the biggest beacon ever built in survival, spanning all the way from bedrock all the way up to sky limit. You're probably asking yourself, why? Well, you see, a few months ago, I was scrolling through YouTube when I came across a video by Wunba, and in this video, he broke Shulkercraft's world record of the biggest beacon ever made. And after watching this video, I thought to myself, I bet I could do better. And so for the last few months, I have been planning and prepping for my biggest project ever. So let's get to it. Okay, the first thing I need to do is figure out where I'm going to put this massive build. Oh, would you look at that? a 1,250 by 1,250 perimeter. It's almost like I planned for this months in advance. Okay, now that we have our spot, I'm gonna make a little skeleton of the beacon so I have a rough idea of how many items that I'm gonna need. Okay, so this is the area size that we're going to be working with. And if we do the math, we can find out that we're going to need 589,824 iron blocks to get this done. And I decided I wanted to use iron blocks because emerald blocks are just way too easy to get with a raid farm. And I already have one built in my world, so I just thought it'd be a little bit unfair to use that. So instead, we're going to use a super powerful 100,000 ingots an hour iron farm. So the first thing I did for this farm was build a bunch of really basic villager breeders because I'm going to need a lot of villagers for this farm, 756 to be exact. After that, I ran to a place where I knew an outpost was and I built a little platform so that the pillagers could spawn on it and I collected them all and named tagged them so we could use them for the farm. Okay, so we have all the pillagers that we're gonna need for the iron farm collected. And it's a little bit of a tight squeeze, but I'm sure they're comfortable. The next thing we need to do is build the giant iron farm that we're gonna put all of these guys in. Let's see how many materials we need. Oh man, we're gonna need 36,000 smooth stone. And I have an easy way to get a lot of cobblestone with my cobblestone farm, but I don't really have a good way to smelt all of it. So... Alright, now that the smelter's done, let's get all our materials. Alright, let's build it up. Now let's build the top half and load in all the villagers and pillagers. Okay, so I put all the beds down for the first layer of villagers and pillagers. And if we reload the schematic here, you can see how we have to put in the pillagers. There's like this little piston contraption that pushes, here, let me go down a little bit, that pushes the guy in there. So I'm gonna do the pillagers first because I'm not exactly sure how I'm supposed to do this without like, you know, breaking everything. So first, let me just... And that's how you do it. Now I just got to do that um, 35 more times. And so I wasted no time getting to work. This is taking me a lot longer than I thought it would, but I'm getting better at loading the villagers, so I should be done pretty soon. Okay, so I'm a little bit over halfway done with the farm, but I'm out of villagers again, so I'm gonna have to AFK for the night. But before I do that, I think we should go ahead and get the materials for the machine we have to build after this farm. Because you see, to truly make the biggest possible beacon, or I guess beacon pyramid is probably more accurate, you have to remove the five layers of bedrock at the bottom of the world so that we're able to get to the lowest possible point. And luckily, I was able to find a machine that was kind of simple to build that did exactly that. So we need all these materials on screen to build it, so let's go get them. So the thing we need the most of is pistons so let's go ahead and get that first since i have my cobblestone farm and all my tree farms well that's pretty convenient i have a bunch of extras left over from when i was building the world eater so i guess that's most of it but i still need some extras for the sticky pistons next up i need four stacks of slime blocks and i already know i have a bunch at my base now i need honey and observers Okay, the rest of the stuff is pretty easy to get, so the next thing I want to get is the Ancient Debris. And the easiest way to get Ancient Debris is just by... All 
All right, finally, I think I got enough now. The rest of the stuff is just small miscellaneous items, so let's go get it. All right, we have everything now, so let's go ahead and AFK for the night and then finish the farm in the morning. All right, boom, it's the next day. Let's finish this farm. Last block, and the farm is done. Let's give it a quick test run real quick. We just flip this lever here, and boom, it works. Let's go, thank God. A little bit laggy, but at least it works. That's what's important. Okay, we'll stop it for now. Next on our to-do list is to make those void trenches that I explained before, and we already got all the materials, so let's just get to building and make our first trench. I had to remove a small section of the platform because there wasn't really enough room to build the trench. I also realized that if I was gonna do five layers, I needed a greater surface area on the top layers, so that means I was gonna need a lot more pistons since pistons are kind of like the fuel for this machine. You'll see how it works. So I'll set up a crafting area real quick. All right, time to craft for five hours. Okay, maybe not five hours, but after about three hours of crafting, I had enough pistons to get started. All right, well, I think we have enough, so let's get building. All right, let's start it up. The machine ran perfectly, thank God. So now all I had to do was repeat that like 20 times. Hue montage. All right, after three days of work, we're finally finished with the void trenches. Now all that's left to do is pretty much just AFK at the iron farm until we have all these chests filled up. I AFK'd a little bit while I was building the void trenches, but as you can see, this is all we got. We need to fill up all of these chests, so that's gonna take a while. So I think I'm gonna have to upgrade my shulker box storage and get some more shulker boxes. So... Yep, we have enough shulker shells here. And then we just need a shulker box of chests. All right, that's 1,728 shulker boxes loaded in. I'm gonna be crafting all day tomorrow, Jesus Christ. Anyway, now all we have to do is AFK for the night until all of those boxes are filled. And I don't even know if that's gonna be enough, but uh, I'll craft it and then we'll see how much we need. All right, so we got about 14 double chests filled up with shulker boxes of iron ingots. So of course, I don't think that's anywhere near enough for the entire thing, but I think that's good enough for now. And also I noticed when I was AFKing overnight, we have a buildup of gold that are somehow getting stuck here, so I'm gonna really quickly just... All right, so now we have a bigger net around the farm. Okay, let's get crafting. I spent about two hours crafting iron blocks and then another three hours to build the first steps of the beacon. And then I had an idea. Okay, so while I was grinding this, I was thinking, right? What's a way that I can make this go by a little bit faster with ease? And then I thought, of course, okay, yeah, I could do beacons. But then I thought, what if I used horses? Because I have the tweaker room mod, which allows me to bridge. And if I use horses, I can do this almost twice as fast. And I have some horses at my base. So let me, uh, let me go grab them real quick. Yeah, okay, I have two horses and a donkey. I also said a couple videos ago that I would name these horses. So this one will be named Cathuria, this one Alonzo, and this one Vexen. All right, let's see which one of them is the fastest so that I can use it in my build. Okay, so we got 9.99 meters a second with the white one and 8.1 meters a second with the gray one. Both of them are kind of bad. And then the donkey's like seven. Yeah, we're not doing that. The fastest possible horse speed in the game is like 14 meters a second. So I'm sure we can find a better one if we just go looking. Let's go into the wild and see if we can find a better one. So sorry, named horse. Horses, uh, we're not gonna be using you today. Oh, awesome, there's two black horses right here. Okay, please be fast. All right, we got this one tamed, let's see. 11.4, okay, that's really good. Let's try this one out just to be sure, but I think we're gonna have to go with the Mustang over there. Please don't walk off the edge. Okay, Lil Bro is actually gonna kill himself. Please don't walk off the edge. Bro, I give you 20 apples and you still don't love me? Come on, bro. 13.1, 13.1, that is insane. Okay, this is crazy. Okay, now I need a way to get him down safely without killing him. Okay, we're gonna leave you here for now. Let's put some water here to break his fall. I'm pretty sure, I mean, I have a million iron blocks. I can just craft buckets. Okay, that should be enough water. Okay, I cannot afford to accidentally kill this horse. Okay, right here. Come on, buddy. If this horse dies, I'm gonna be beyond furious. Okay. 
We're good, we made it. Okay, now let's leave the horse here, craft up some more iron blocks, and get back to building. After four more hours of crafting blocks, and with the use of my new horse, which I named Kevin, by the way, I was making slow but steady progress on the beacon. All right, well, we're making really, really good progress. I'm uh, definitely over halfway done at this point, but we're out of iron again, so back to AFKing, I guess. After one more night of AFKing, I got right back to work. <laughs> All right, one more round to go. And I was finally on the last stretch of this project. I could see the light at the end of the tunnel. I had to craft a few more iron blocks, grind out a little bit more building, and it was time to beat One Buzz record. And with the final block placed, the project is complete. But I don't even care about that. I just wanted to get my achievement. 